Now, we know that the market cap of MTN has halved over the last few months, starting in October 2015. And we know this was around the time when the Nigerian Communications Commission imposed a fine on the company and the story has continued to develop. The question that we are asking now is, is there still value in, in MTN? But more worryingly, is there still value in MTN Zakele BEE shares? And to help us get to the bottom of this uh, debate that has been brewing is the chairperson of MTN Zakele. Her name is Cindy Mabasukoyana, and she joins us now, looking fantastic as ever. And I, I must declare, like, this is the kind of person that I stalk to look good. So, oh. so I stalk with this scene to make sure that I get all the big fashion tips from her, as you can see, gorgeous as ever. And it's working. Thank you very much. On both of our behalf, <laughs> you end up doing better. <laughs> it's lovely to see you. Thank let's you. Stop, let's, I mean, there's been a bit of a media uproar around the performance of MTN Zakele shares. Just, just maybe put it into context uh, for us. How has the scheme performed? Well, thank you, Nozipo, for the opportunity and uh, David as well. Uh, when the scheme launched in 2010, uh, we must all remember that our shareholders bought at 20 rand. Um, yes, the only share or uh, the only asset that the MTN Zakele scheme has is the MTN um, share. So which means it will um, you know, follow the trends of that share. However, this is a share that is trading today around 60, 65 rand. So there is value. Yes, it has declined, um, you know, since uh, what's been happening in the market, especially around MTN Group. However, for that shareholder who bought at 20 rand, their share today is around 60 rand, which is three times still. Just remind us of the structure of it and uh, is it locked in for a certain period? Can they cash in their money if they want to at certain points? Uh, because some of the BEE deals have ended up not actually benefiting people because there's so many, uh, you know, structures and restrictions and you've got to keep mm. it for 10 years and things like that. Sure. The lock-in period was six years I I I originally. After three years in 2013, we then allowed our uh, shareholders to trade on the over the trade counter, which we facilitated from an MTN Zakele point of view. And I must say that um, during the OTC, the share went up to about 140 rand. Mm. So any shareholder who would have bought in 2010 mm. in October for 20 rand and decided to sell during the OTC platform would have made in excess of 100 rand and it went up to 140, as I say. Mm. Right now, if anyone still wants to trade post um, the listing on the 5th of uh, November um, uh, 2015, can still fetch around um, you know, 60 rand a share. Mm. And the six, year, six years expires in November 2016, which then means beyond that time, no um, one is locked in. In fact, they were not locked in f since 2013, so mm. to speak. However, mm. you could sell to another black person. Mm. Mm. So beyond 20, uh, November 2016, um, if nothing happens and it is as it was planned, it means black shareholding could be diluted. Mm at that point. And, and I suppose the, at the crux of this issue is the degree of exposure or insulation that you have from some of the issues and the challenges that are facing uh, MTN at a group level. Right. And this must be one of the biggest conversations that you and the team are having. And, uh, I was thinking also you must have shareholders, many of them who are not particularly interested in the corporate world, they know that they have a share, and they must see these headlines and say, hey, What's this doing to our shares? And how are you responding, I guess, is the question. I guess for us it's important to um, acknowledge that our shareholders have indeed, um, you know, uh, their share, the share has declined. So what we say to them at the moment is that given what is happening at MTN Group, we as, as, as MTN Zakele are a totally different legal structure. Mm. We cannot control what is happening there. However, we know we are affected. Yeah. So we can only hope and, we, you know, for the quick, you know, um, resolution of this matter that it's resolved as soon as possible. Um, however, right now for our members, we say to them, do not panic. However, take cognizance of the cautionaries that MTN mm. Group yeah. keeps bringing up. Be aware. So when you trade, trade with caution. We're not stopping yeah. them to trade. However, we're saying just be mindful of what's going on. We but can you know, 
yeah. a lot of the people who come into our studio in the week, they say that MTN hasn't communicated as well as it should have on this. Now, maybe you can't comment on that, but uh, it does seem they've been a bit behind the curve at times. The last um, uh, communication that came out of MTN uh, that we tracked was on the 22nd of January. Mm -hmm. And so every time when something comes out of the MTN uh, group communication, we communicate, um, you know, with uh, our our structures. We've got SMS communication, website. Um, um, so we 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 are, we've got a very good communication mm. channels with our members. Mm. Um, yeah. And I, I suppose just to take the conversation a little bit broader and 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 just think about BE schemes in the context of South Africa. Do they have a good or a, a bad rep? What is the the perception around uh, investing in BE schemes? You know, investing is investing at, at the end of the day. And one of the important things um, that we did when we started the scheme, especially when we opened it for the OTC, was shareholder communication and rather education. Mm. That investing comes with risks. You know, um, the share prices will fluctuate depending on what happens in the market. Some issues are controllable, others are, are out of the control of that organization. So in this particular case, the importance of an investor who comes into the mainstream of you know, trading and being a, an active um, you know, investor, those are the things that need to be understood and underpin any investment uh, process. From a BE scheme point of view, we must also uh, remember the objective of this is indeed to bring you know, some of our people who are in the periphery who mm. never knew anything about buying shares, never participated in investing in any, you know, e um, e you know equity or, or, or corporates. So the, 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 that objective has been met. We look at our own shareholder profile, mm. um, about 100,000 and, uh, uh, and 500 uh, shareholders. It's one of the biggest, 98 percent of them are individuals, mm. you know, and um, and the rest is is is, is groups, um, you know, it's 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 organised, um, uh, it, it's organisations. So that on its own is demonstrating the success of just conscientizing into mm. an, the investment um, into the investment space. Mm. And most of our shoulders come from the broader areas mm. uh, of um, you know. Uh, In of, other words, of, real of empowerment. Of but where, where do you think BE is, to follow up on your question, I mean, we've had different schemes over the years, and the later ones, you'd think, would have learnt from the earlier ones. Sure. I mean, we had Nedbank, which had a share issue scheme to employees, but black employees got four for, for the three that, uh, they got four shares for three, as opposed to the white employees not. Sassel had a huge empowerment scheme, and then when the share price dropped, it was kind of underwater. People said, well, where's our money? And there's been lots of lessons learned in education, but mm. also in structures. Yeah. Where are we now? What's the ideal system now? And where should we be going with this? So, you know, share ownership is obviously an important part of the equation in terms of empowerment, economic empowerment. Um, as we are aware, <laughs> there, there's a greater talk now in terms of skills development, making sure that Yes, you can be a shareholder in any scheme, in any structure, in any organization. But what is important is actually understanding and having depth of the businesses mm. that we actually invest in, in terms of operational activity, you know, going out there and, and building entrepreneurs. And that is going to be a much more sustainable model than, you know, just being a shareholder. And this is more from, by the way, a black economic mm. point of view, mm. because we can't all only just be shareholders and don't have the depth from a legacy point of view in creating lasting black owned and managed businesses. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's an important uh, insight as well. And I, to, to uh, piggyback on that perhaps, and, and to bring this, because we've just been speaking to Ravi and Lesiba and we're really talking around the big macroeconomic issues. Right. What kind of policy either changes or introductions do you think we need in this country if we're really going to see a sustainable growth of black entrepreneurs in the country? You know, um, one of the things, whether it's policy, but more from, you know, an encouragement in terms of our black communities is also to encourage us to go into industries and sectors which are low-hanging fruit in terms of where we 
have got qualifications where we have studied the ones where we understand so f more from a financial services point of view mm. you know or it, it would be great to see that even the shareholding is not just from you, you, you um, people who only want to create wealth but for people who also this is their area uh, you know of, 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 of interests from mm. a career point of view one would like to see that being strengthened somehow where we channel our energies mm. where we can really create depth from a knowledge uh, you know point of view it sounds like a mindset thing at a personal level before we can even start looking out to it looking for funding ventures and, or, and, and any form of external support it definitely and 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 i guess it, it's creating that balance in our minds to say Yes, we would like, having been excluded from the economic mainstream, we would like to make sure that we can start enjoying, you know, the great life and have some wealth that we're building. However, it is also important that we are plowing back, we are investing for, you know, for things to last. Mm. Here's the thing which I've never understood why more companies haven't gone for, is to give employees shares. I mean, it, it makes sense from a business point of view. You've got it, you, your employees support your business if they've got shares in it. And yet we don't seem to have really picked that up. It seems to be a, such an opportunity for empowerment. It, it, it's interesting because, I mean, if you see uh, companies like your, your, you know, your Edcons, they've done schemes like that. And, um, you, you know, you want to see that even translating on the shop floor where you're seeing an employee mm. whose customer service, for example, yeah. improves because they know that yeah. I've got my skin in mm. the game. So it is a mindset issue and that education of people realizing that, you know, that there are broader things in terms of the issue of ownership. But coming back to um, the, the system has almost forced people to say, I must look for the known names because, you know, my organization needs to, you know, have someone who can go and create, uh, do business development with government. Mm. That is, that's some of the things that have actually driven, you know, and, and also the funding where let me go for someone who can put the mm. money, you know, people who have already made it. And that is how, you know, you, we have found that maybe it has become very, it's been slower in introducing new players, in introducing employees. However, you are quite right. The model will actually be much more sustainable because even employees will look at productivity yeah. issues. Mm. You know, even when you're discussing wage increases, which is something that is also my bugbear in terms of we are very, um, you know, uh, strong in discussing, you know, um, rates of pay. However, we're very thin as a country in discussing productivity. Yeah. Well, on that note, uh, a very big thank you to Cindy Mabasokoyana giving us uh, the insight on the performance of the MTN Zakele shares as well as other broader BE issues. She is, of course, the chairperson of uh, MTN Zakele.